descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You, you will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am, and since I am a virgin? The angel answered, answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, and she who is was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left. I'm pregnant. I cannot deliver. From this discourse between Mary and Gabriel, I see three guidelines, three gestational guidelines that will help us solidify our ability to deliver the destiny the, the purpose and the call that God has for our lives. The first guideline I see is this. It has to do with information. Verse 34. In short, if you are going to deliver the destiny that God has birthed in you, don't be afraid to ask the tough questions of God. Don't be afraid to ask the tough questions of God. Look at this. Mary got right to the point in verse 34. How will this be since I'm a virgin? How is this going to happen? I love the way the King James Version puts, out, puts it. How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? It wasn't that Mary doubted the truth of what Gabriel was saying. She just needed answers to some very tough questions. See, Lord, I know that I'm only 14, and I know how the process works. But to date, that process hasn't taken place in my life. So, so how is this going to work? I, I believe what you said, but how am I going to give birth to this child? One commentator put it this way. Mary does not ask for a sign to prove the truth of the words, but she asks for further information. She believes that what Gabriel has declared as God's messenger. She believes it's going to happen, but she does not understand how it will be realized and therefore asks, how shall this be since I'm a virgin? Now, if you're like me, you remember in growing up hearing people say, don't you dare question God. Correct? No? Who are you to question God? He's God and you're not. Don't you say anything about that. Let, God is God. Don't, don't, don't question him. Don't ask, don't ask questions of him. Here, listen, my friends. There's a big difference between questioning God and asking questions of God. All right. And sometimes we get caught not knowing which way to go because we've got it in our mind that if we ask the right questions and the tough questions of God, then we're questioning him. I believe this shows us that God loves to give direction. God loves to give information. God loves to lead us, and he's not, he's not going to lead us unless we ask him what it is that he wants. Correct? Amen. So if I'm pregnant with destiny, and I want to deliver that destiny, I need to know exactly what it is that God wants me to do in order to deliver it. And so I need to ask the tough questions of God. But here's, here's the catch. Make sure that you're prepared for the tough answers. Because <laughs> we, we, we like to ask God the questions, but we want him to give us the answers that we have determined are the right thing. Should I go to the left or should I go to the right? Well, I love the way the left looks. It looks pretty good over here. So, God, I'm asking you, and he says, go right. Well, I don't want to do that, so maybe uh, you know, I, 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 I'm just not going to listen. So when we ask the tough questions of God, we prepare for the tough answers. But sometimes those tough answers are the things that God wants to use to deal with the tough issues in our lives that get in the way of us delivering what it is that he's called us to deliver. Amen? All right. All right. All right. In her book, Keep a Quiet Heart, Elizabeth Elliot, who, who buried two husbands, um, says this about questions. It's always best to go first for our answers to Jesus himself. He cried on the cross. Jesus himself asked God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was a human cry, a cry of desperation springing from his heart's agony at the prospect of being put into the hands of wicked men and actually becoming sin for you and me. He never suffered anything like that. Yet, yet we've, we've never suffered anything like that. Yet we do 
six months filled with sickness and crying, why, Lord? Why, why have you forsaken me? The psalmist asked why. Job, a blameless man suffering from a horrible torment on an ashes, asked why. Does not seem to be to be sinful to ask the question. Ask the tough questions of God. He wants to give you the answers. Just make sure you're prepared for the tough answers that might be come. That might come. So if I'm going to deliver the destiny that God has inside me, I need information. But there's a second thing I see here that um, that uh, that that comes from what what this discourse says. If I'm going to uh, be uh, prepared to deliver, I need information, but I also need saturation. Information and saturation. Verse 35. In other words, be filled with and be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Verse 35 was made clear that the Holy Spirit was going to bring all of this about. Mm -hmm. Mary asked the question, and the answer that she got from Gabriel was, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Gabriel was saying, look, Mary, it's okay. The Father knows you haven't been with the man. In fact, he designed it with that purpose in mind, because man cannot produce the destiny that God is birthing you. Man cannot produce the, God, the destiny that God is birthing in you. It's a spirit thing. And total dependence upon the Holy Spirit and leading of the Holy Spirit is vital to fulfilling what has been promised. Sometimes we have a hard time accomplishing what God has called us to do because we need more information for direction. Sometimes we have a hard time accomplishing what God has called us to do because we're trying to do it in our own strength. And we determine how things go. And what this shows us is God will give us the information, but he will also give us the empowerment. And we need to rely on the Holy Spirit in order to move forward in birthing the destiny that God has called us to birth. Uh, a couple of years ago, my wife and I took some students from, uh, from the college to Pittsburgh for uh, a weekend to represent the college. And we sang in uh, the, the weekend services at the church. And it was, it was an incredible weekend. We really felt the presence of God moving. Um, and, and the students really, really really enjoyed themselves. And in the, in the service, we, we put together some songs we sang in English and in Spanish. One of the songs that we sang was um, entitled Glorify Your Name. And the way the song starts is with the soloist singing in Spanish first and then the rest of us joining in English. Um, we sang the song, and it must have been particularly moving to uh, the person who was playing guitar because he went to his host home that evening and went to sleep. And the next morning in, pre in getting ready for the service, um, he woke up singing this song. And uh, this song, this story has been relayed to me by the students who also were staying with him. Now the song goes like, the words in English are, your presence, your glory, you are welcome here. In Spanish, it would say, tu presencia, tu gloria, bienvenido aquí. Tu presencia, tu gloria. This young man woke up singing at the top of his lungs, sure that he understood the Spanish, but he missed it. Because instead of singing tu presencia, he sang tu placenta. <laughs> so he's singing at the top of his lungs to the Lord. Tu placenta, tu gloria. You know, so the story gets relayed to us. We're laughing about it. It's kind of funny. Your placenta, your glory. You know what? I thought about that. If you really understand what the placenta does, that young man's theology wasn't off. Because the placenta is the source of life for the baby. Through the placenta, the baby is supplied food. Through the placenta, the baby is supplied oxygen. Through the placenta, the, the babies provide nutrients. In addition, the, the placenta produces hormones that plays a role in triggering labor and delivery. And if that baby somehow loses connection with the placenta while that baby is in the womb, yeah. that baby could die. Amen. The Holy Spirit is our life source. The Holy Spirit is our life source. The Holy Spirit feeds us. The Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit nurtures us. The Holy Spirit causes us to live. The Holy Spirit triggers those things in us when we're looking for direction. And God, God, what are we to do? The Holy Spirit speaks to us and says, that's the direction to go to. The Holy Spirit speaks to us and says, stay away from that. And if we are disconnected from the Spirit of God in the midst of trying to deliver this destiny that God has given us, in the midst of trying to let this baby be birthed, that God, we could die. 